before we get in before we get into the players who are eligible, do you guys like the franchise tag as a concept? Do you just kind of wish that they would just go into free agency regularly? How do you how do you guys feel about it? Because I sometimes I'm okay and sometimes I'm just like, oh, that's kind of dumb. I'm what totally you- against it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's the biggest BS in all sports. You have these players that are putting their lives on the line. Football is probably the most brutal sport outside of combat sports, um, you know, in in the world. If you look at the NFL, how violent it is, how aggressive it is. These guys are putting limbs, broken bones, ACL tears, Achilles. I mean, concussions. And you're going to tell a guy like Dak, who is probably worth 60 to 75 million dollars in value a year in terms of jersey sales, in terms of TV deals, in terms of winning games, in terms of sponsorships. He's probably worth around 70 million dollars a year to Dallas. And you're going to say, oh, we don't know if this guy's worth 35 a year or 37 and a half. We're going to franchise tag him and pay him this, you know, average of the top five salaries, which sounds good, I guess, because you're like, oh, I'm making top five money. But It takes one wrong cut, which you see, which you saw with Dak, one hit that goes against what your what physics says and you're done and it's over. And the owners win in the NFL. The players don't win. And the fact and, you know, this isn't just an and it's more than even owners. The NFL PA guys like Demore Smith that have been around forever. Why don't you do something and change the rules and the franchise tag? You have the players support. Players don't need to play football. They do it because it's a, it's something that pays them. They're they're like actors. They play football. They get paid by the ownership. If they all get together and they don't want to play, they're not going to play. Get rid of the franchise tag. Put the players in a position where they're not. They have some security. How many of these guys leave the NFL, Nick and, and Bray, Leave the NFL and then they're 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 out to lunch. In five years, their money's gone. They, yeah. you make twenty million dollars after taxes. That's thirteen, fourteen. You buy a few things. You're at ten. You're eight to ten. Eight to ten million dollars for the for for forty years after you play. It's not that. It's not as much money as people think. Take eight. Take ten million dollars and put it across forty years and split it. How much is that per year? It, it's a it's a great salary, but uh, these a lot of these guys aren't even financially fit to know what to do with that money. Th- then they get scumbags who spend the money for them that spend their money that get them into investments that they don't want to get into. And these guys are screwed while the franchise tag just allows these owners to do it. Not once, not twice, three times. You don't get lucky like Kirk cousins does and, and, and be able to do it and then get your three year deal and, and, and things all work out in your favor. If I was Dak and sorry to go off on this, but this is like, really. I agree with you. Yeah. I'm just saying if I was Dak, I would literally say franchise, He's nuts. <laughs> I am not taking the franchise tag. And if you guys franchise tag me, I am. I'm, I will not move from my chair. I'll sit in my chair all day. Like I'm going to sit here all day. Like I would literally not move until I get a deal. I want thirty-seven and a half million dollars per year. Yeah, I, I agree with pretty much everything you said, dude. I, I completely am on board with. I hate the franchise tag. Not only for, you know. Let's talk about being selfish as a fan, too. It, it takes so much juice out of free agency, right? I mean, this year you're going to have Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, maybe Hunter Henry, our, our, our guy, you know, Leonard Williams, Shaq Griffin, uh, Shaq Barrett, Brandon Sheriff, possibly, even though they say that they don't expect it. Like, it takes the top talent off the board, and these guys have to wait another year to hit the open market and, and cash in. If they're never going to get rid of it because the owners love it, even though it's complete garbage, but there needs to be some kind of limit to it. Like first rounders should not be able to be tagged, let's say, because they already have the fifth year option. So now you're saying you're going to have to wait six years to get to the open market. Bullshit. Now you want to talk about, you know, the second rounders, third, fourth, all the way undrafted. Let's say, fine, we won't get rid of it. You can't tag more than once. That should be the old, that should be like, the starting level for the yeah that should be baseline there's Definitely. no way you should be able to franchise tag two three years because let's say you got a 24 year old well, let's say a 23 year old coming into the nfl you if you make it even though the you know the 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 shelf life of a nfl player is like three years on average let's say you do make it to the point where you're talking about your second contract with everybody is that's your goal right coming into the nfl is to get that second contract agents live for that the players live for that you get to the point, you come into the league at 23, four years down the line, 27. They can tag you 28, 29. 
you're hitting free agency at 29, 30 years old, and you're considered old in the NFL. Like you're talking about like Leonard Williams finally possibly getting tagged again would go. And he was young when he came into the NFL. He was 21 when he was drafted by the Jets. But he would hit free agency at 27, 28 years old. Like his prime technically was in the NFL is 24 to 28. Why do these players sign the franchise tag? That's because an it's, it's guaranteed I have no money. idea. I mean, but you're going to sit for it's the tag is 16 money. million for the for the receivers, right? This year, like, I mean, you're telling the guy, hey, you're going to sit out a year and not make 16 million dollars, and then look what happened with Le'Veon. But he I think if out. the players come together and just make it known that they're not going to sign the franchise, say, I'm telling you, if I was a player, I would not sign the franchise tag. It come to me or my age or my desk, whatever. I'd be like, sorry, thanks, but no thanks. Like, I do not want to. I'll take. I'll take half of what the franchise tag is in my first two or three years. Set yourself up with a contract. The well, franchise there's, there's tag an issue has, with the playing. Too. Like you're, you don't, you're not the same player if you sit out a year. It's you can't, you can't like replicate or simulate. I should say, like play playing reps. Like look at Le'Veon. He sat out and he's done. Like yeah. you can't. You know, it's hard to tell a guy, a 25 year old, hey, pass up 15 million dollars guaranteed, injury guarantee, and everything sit out a year, you know, even if you do train, let's say they, they train like they would, like they were playing, you can't, you can't simulate, you know, game action. So then you're coming, you've sat out a whole off season, whole season, another off season, and then you try and go, you know, the, the owners know that they know that these guys aren't going to do that. So they hold it over their heads. It's up to the NFL PA and the agents and, and yeah, the players, but they need to get back. You know, I know the CBA, they're not going to talk for a while, but they need to have a sit down and say, we need to rework this franchise tag because the players hate it. I yeah. have I have a solution. I want to see what you guys think. Keep the franchise tag for one year under one stipulation. Any team can franchise tag you. Anyone. So you as a player, I, I, I get the franchise tag. I can pick which team I want to go to. So I get 20 tags. I pick I want to go play for the Patriots. I am going to go and get my top five salary and play with the Patriots. I think that's, I think that would be in the players, at least give the player a choice of who he wants to play with and where I think that's a good idea. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that a little crazy? Yeah. I mean, the teams wouldn't, the the teams definitely wouldn't do that. It's basically free agency because you're not going back. Um, Then there's like the non-exclusive tag. (laughs) Well, they do. They have like the non-exclusive tag where you can technically, let's say the Jets franchise tag Marcus May and they put the non-trend, you know, the non-exclusive means he can go out and sign a deal with a team, but the Jets have the the Jets have the option to match it or get, you know, a draft pick back or, or whatever it may be. So like, I just think it needs the fact that it can go for two or three years is ridiculous. Like if Brandon Sheriff can get tagged, I know he would make, I think 18 million this year with, with Washington and, you know, Dax money would go up 20%. And I, I believe if Matt Judon gets tagged again in Baltimore, he would go up too. But, like, there's no way you should be able to tag somebody two or three years. It's, like, complete you – yeah. know, the players are completely I, mean, I would tag someone as much as possible. Why not? That's what they do. You know, when you pay them a little bit more, if they get hurt, you don't have to be on the hook the next year if they yep. lose a step or two. But. And Justin Simmons with the Broncos is probably going to get tagged again the safety. That's, that's I think, insanity. I think the most interesting thing about this, maybe – I, I don't know if you guys have seen this. In the last couple of days, though, I feel like there's been more players that are openly speaking out against Demora Smith, mm-hmm. saying that he doesn't he doesn't actually care about the players. Like he his yeah, he position never. is he's a poli- he's his a position's phony. Like he's a politician. I mean, like I, I've seen I've seen that before, but I feel like this year, probably because of all the COVID stuff, is it's more prevalent, especially on social media. Yeah, yeah, I saw Marlon Humphrey tweeted something, I think, the yeah. other day. Ravens Corner, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely you – know, like, like it's, like it's run like the government in a sense, too. You have Roger Goodell, who's the, in charge, and then you have Demore Smith, who's supposed to be supporting the players. But when him and Goodell get in a room together, they do what's best for – the owners, I mean, baby. It's the all about lying everything. in their pockets, man. They know. Right. Yeah, yeah of course. They too with, with these deals. Yeah, something needs to be said. I'm glad we actually talked about this on the show because, I mean, when we start talking with players, Nick, about doing shows and we have relationships with a few guys, I mean, I want to let them know and, and, and change something. This is not good for them, and it's not good for their families more than anything. Their yeah. families get screwed, um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a bad situation, but it, it probably won't change anytime soon until unless players come together, which is what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then is I feel like that's here? I gotta go out soon, y'all. Kind of nice. It's the twilight in Miami. It's nice. So nice. 